Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Well, it's the middle of January and that usually means that volumes as well as tender rejection rates will start going down. Usually from mid-January all the way through February is a quiet time in the trucking industry, so there's not much movement. But the good news is that this is pretty normal. This is just the cyclical pattern of this industry. So today we're going to once again look at a weekly market update as well as as a forecast of what to expect in the coming days in the trucking market. Now, if you're new to this channel, welcome. I teach about the trucking industry with a heavy focus on the spot market. So if this is something that interests you, feel free to subscribe down below. All right, guys, let's dive into the data. Ready? Let's go. All right, as always, we're going to start with the capacity trend score. Now, as a reminder, and I keep messing this up in every single video, Capacity trends tell us what kind of negotiating power a carrier has. The closer the value is to 100, the more negotiating power the carrier has in that particular market, which means there are way more loads than there are trucks. But capacity trends do not tell us what the rates will be in that market. It just tells us supply and demand, basically. So for vans, we can see that the highest value, there are actually two highest values, is Dallas, Texas and Greenville, South Carolina. Los Angeles, California is on the number three spot. And the great thing is that both Dallas and Los Angeles actually increased over the past week by nine points in Los Angeles and three points in Dallas, Texas, which means that the capacity is tightening in these two areas. Basically, when you get there, you can negotiate brokers up because there are way more loads than there are trucks to cover those loads. And then you can see later on, there's Evansville, Hutchinson, and it becomes basically the markets become looser and looser in terms of capacity. But what are the worst markets when it comes to dry vans and negotiating power? So number one is Stockton, California. The value is at three, which means that shippers and brokers are the ones with the negotiating power. Basically, there are more trucks here than there are loads, AKA oversupply, lack of demand. Number two is Maryland, Connecticut, North Carolina, and Greensboro. Again, this is by market area. But let's take a look now at the reefers. So for the reefers, it's not as fantastic because you can see that instead of tightening, markets are becoming more loose, which is shown in this red color right here. In terms of the best place to be in order to be able to negotiate as a carrier, it's Fresno, California, but it actually dropped by three points since last week. Number two place, New Jersey, Elizabeth, New Jersey, Indianapolis, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, which also dropped. Everything else has no real change here. But let's take a look at places where the brokers have the upper hand and the shippers have the upper hand. Well, number one, which surprised the bejesus out of me, is it's Fort Wayne, Indiana. The value is at 11, which means that in Fort Wayne, Indiana, basically there are way more trucks than there are loads, so shippers can negotiate those rates down, as well as brokers. Then we have St. Louis, Missouri, which also surprised me. But again, this is by market area, right? Seattle, Washington, Winchester, Washington, Texas, Tennessee, and so on and so forth. Now, this chart is the tender reject index for a van. Now, to give you an idea, the higher the tender reject index, the more likely the spot rates in that market area are going to be higher as well. Now, what we can see is that for vans, the best place in terms of tender rejection rates at 19.5% is Omaha, Nebraska. On the second spot, it's Rapid City, South Dakota, and on the third, it's Duluth, Minnesota. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. They're actually the same with Rapid City, South Dakota. So these are the places where the rates should be highest. Now, something I keep forgetting to mention, I don't think I mentioned it before. These tender rejection rates actually give us a forecast into the next few days because tender rejections are recorded in real time. But these loads that are rejected by contract carriers will only end up on the load board in a few days from now. So that is something that's really, really neat. But let's go ahead and look at the load board. Today is a holiday, so there are not going to be many loads. It's not going to be a great comparison uh, to this. 
but let's take a look at the load board and see what these three markets for the dry van look like. So as we saw, the highest tender rejection rate is happening right now in Omaha, Nebraska, although it is only at 19.5%. It's not that great. It has fallen from last week by 3.7%. Let's take a look at today. So we can see that the rates from Omaha, Nebraska are fantastic, especially to the West Coast. North Carolina, it's pretty good right here. Of course, Idaho, Montana, Florida will always pay very, very well. We see that to uh, Laredo, Texas, it pays pretty well as well, but of course the rates are nowhere near what they were uh, this past week. Unfortunately, the rates are going down. Now, the second place was Rapid City. So let's take a look. Volumes in Rapid City are usually not really great. Yep, 37 exact matches, but maybe it's just because of the holiday, although I don't think so. The rates are decent to Arizona, to to Washington, of course, to the West Coast, they're pretty decent. Yeah, there's not a ton of volume here. Rapid City, South Dakota does not have a ton of volume, unfortunately. To Houston, Texas, it pays pretty bad uh, today, but we will see what happens tomorrow. Now, finally, there is Duluth, Minnesota. I hope I'm pronouncing, I think I'm pronouncing this correctly. So we have Duluth, Minnesota, which has the same tender rejection index as Rapid City. So let's take a look. The volume is good here. And we can see that the rates are pretty good as well. Waco, Texas, it pays very, very well. We have Arkansas, it pays not so well here. To Kansas, it pays decent. To Missouri, it pays decent. Shorter loads here pay pretty, pretty well. Then we have the reefer, right? On the number one spot at 51% rejection rate, which is fantastic, is Bismarck, North Dakota. On the number two spot, it's Fargo, North Dakota. And then finally, Sioux Falls. Oh my God, thank you guys for telling me how to pronounce this. Sioux Falls at 37.5%. And the best part is actually for a reefer in terms of rejection rates, these three areas increased in terms of rejection rates over the last week. But again, let's take a look at the load board. Okay, for the reef round, the number one spot was Bismarck, North Dakota, right? At 51% in terms of rejection rates. So let's take a look. The volume here is awful right now, but again, holiday. And it's right now 12 noon uh, in North Dakota, so not surprising. But nevertheless, to Georgia, it pays pretty well. To Idaho, of course, it pays very, very well. Although Idaho is a good place to be if you have a reefer. Uh, to Los Angeles, California, it pays well. Even to Illinois, it pays very, very well. Let's take a look at what is happening tomorrow when it's no longer the holiday. Something to note, many brokers do not post their loads in advance. So the volume is very, very low here right now. Uh, but we can see that even to Illinois, it pays fantastic. It pays over $3 per mile, it looks like. Pennsylvania pays fantastic. So yeah, there are some opportunities in Bismarck. On the number two spot was Fargo, North Dakota. And if I remember correctly, Fargo will have usually higher volumes for reefers. Yep, I am correct. And let's change it to today. And we can see here that the rates are pretty fantastic. Holy moly. $9,000 for Pennsylvania. What is going on here? Oh, okay, you go backwards to Idaho, that's why. Yeah, because this looked like an overly high rate. Um, Florida pays well, of course. Arizona will pay very well, but the rates here are fantastic. Look at this, $4,000, 4,337 miles. 1,200 miles, $4,200. So yeah, Fargo has the volume and it has the rejection rate. That is fantastic. This is what you always need to try to do. And we'll look at the map in just a moment. High volume, high rejection rate. Finally, on the number three spot, and I am going to pronounce it correctly, thanks to you guys, Sioux Falls. So <laughs> Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Let's take a look. It looks like North Dakota and South Dakota are the places to be for a reefer in the coming days. Yep, the rates are pretty decent. We can see uh, Texas pays $4,300 for 1,200 miles. So yeah, the Dakotas are a good place to be if you have a reefer. And especially Fargo and Sioux Falls, they have the volume there as well as the rejection rate. All right, something that I haven't shown before is equipment specific tender rejection. This blue filled in line is flatbeds. 
this blue line right here is reefers and the red line is dry them. So let me make this a little bit bigger and you will see this is where we are today, which basically gives us the explanation of why flatbeds do get the highest rate per mile right now reefers are on the number two spot and dry vans of course are on the number three spot that being said these rejection rates it's a good view of the national market right but there is a way to still make a ton of money if you're just strategic about where to go so let me show you so here we have my amazing favorite map Again, as a reminder, and I'm sorry if you watch these videos every week, I keep explaining it. The height of an area shows the volume, how many actual loads are there. The darker blue an area, the higher the tender rejection rate is, right? So vans look pretty decent in terms of volume as well as rejection rates. We can see that, of course, the Midwest is a great place to be in terms of volume and rejection rates. There is a ton of volume out of Houston and the rejection rates are going up from last week, which is awesome. Of course, Atlanta, Georgia didn't change much, but for vans, it looks like a pretty good, decent map, right? Now, for reefers, the situation became a little bit dire uh, this week, right? So let's take a look. So for reefers, there's a lot of flat surface, which means there's no volume and there are no tender rejection rates either. Now, of course, the Midwest right here, it's pretty good. Although Chicago, Illinois, it has a ton of volume, but the rejection rates are just not there. Ohio is pretty dead. Pennsylvania died in terms of rejection rates. Houston became a little bit more interesting, less volume, but the rejection rates are higher. And of course, Utah, Idaho, and places like Pasco, Washington, Grandview, Washington, great place for the reefer. Finally, let's look at the heat map for diesel prices. And this is nothing new, although I do want to mention something. The values, the highest and lowest values here actually decreased from last week because diesel prices are continuing to drop, which is amazing. But as always, the East Coast and the West Coast have the highest diesel prices. The darker blue in area, the higher the diesel price, closer to $5.58 per gallon. The grayer in area, the closer it is to $3.81 per gallon, which is awesome. Midwest, good place to be. And just to show you, diesel prices are continuing to go down. This is the actual price per gallon. This is updated on a daily basis. And we can see that right now we're at $4.64 per gallon on average. So this is really, really welcome news, especially considering that volumes and tender rejections and rates are going to start going down for the next one and a half months. It's good to know that the diesel prices are following that same pattern. So in terms of experience this week, unfortunately for me, it has been non-existent. One of my guys has his truck in the repair shop for the past five days. Whole other story. The other one is starting tomorrow and the rest of the trucks are on active loads. So I didn't really have to book much. What I did notice this past week is that Murphy's Law loves me. What can happen will always happen. And what happens is usually not the best of news. Like I said before, maintenance has been a huge pain in the butt for us in the past few days. But here's my plan because I do have a plan. I'm trying to be strategic here. It seems like the Midwest remains to be the most decent area for dry vans, for example. So I'm planning to keep my dry vans in the Midwest and paired with the lowest diesel prices relatively, it's a good place to be, especially those one day loads, they seem to be paying pretty well for dry vans. Now for the reefers, as I mentioned before, the reefers are run by our team members, company drivers, so miles are extremely important. So my plan is to run them somewhere from the south or Midwest to the west coast, areas like Idaho, Utah, and the eastern part of Washington, there and back. And that way the volumes are good, the rates should be decent, Decent and my guys are getting the miles they need. Now, sometime later this week, I'll be releasing another video that focuses on the current macroeconomics that are driving our industry. I always want to know the cause and effect of every single relationship. That is something that is very important to me. But you guys let me know if this is something that is interesting to you as well. Anyway, guys, I hope you learned something new from this market update and forecast. Stay safe, stay resilient, and I will see you all in the next video video.